I'm James Deemer, the audio nomad, and today we're going to do a review on the CVJ Kimang Aria. I honestly can't tell you a whole lot about this IEM. Lin Sol sent it to me. Um, so it was a total surprise. I couldn't even find it online or find out what the price is. It's pretty interesting though. The Aria is manufactured by CVJ and I believe it is maybe a subset of the original Aria. So it's the Aria Ki Meng. In any case, it's a really lovely IEM and it has some interesting features that I'd like to talk with you about. The presentation and packaging of the CVJ Kimang Aria is quite nice. It's a fairly large box that opens from the top like a box of chocolates and there's a nice velvet plate that has all the stuff in it. That's sort of standard. Comes with a nice puck, the set of tips, but it also has this card that uh, has a nice painting, sort of a nocturnal scene with a person near a water and some mushrooms. It's pretty trippy. It's kind of cool. And on the back, there's, it's almost a poem, almost an ode to what this IEM is. And it's really fun to read. In the steel jungle of modern cities, people long to find a dreamlike oasis of their own. The Kimang and in in-ear dynamic earphones are like a secret door to a dreamlike oasis, opening up a magical journey for those who long for a spiritual home. That's just the beginning. You really, you gotta read this thing. It's pretty awesome. Someone had fun writing it. So one of the interesting things about the CVJ Kimang Aria is it comes with removable nozzles and those are for tuning. You can change the, the tuning and we'll show you the graph of each colored nozzle. I did something kind of dumb and I took the nozzles out and I couldn't remember where they went back. One is instrumental, one is popular and one is equilibrium. I have what I think are the equilibriums in now. Those are the ones that I tended to like the best. They're the gold colored ones. If you flip the, the nozzles over, you'll see that the blue ones have some foam stuffed inside the nozzle and the gold and the silver ones don't. And then the difference between the silver and the gold is the, the silver I believe has more holes per area than the gold does. The gold is a little bit more closed off and it does, change the sound marginally, but the difference between the silver and gold isn't a lot. The difference between the blue and the silver and the gold is quite substantial. The shells are, they're aluminum, I believe. They are vented in the front and on the top. They're sculptural. They're a pretty sort of a, a blurple, maybe a little blue purple. Tell me in the comments what you think this color is. The shape is quite comfortable to my ears. My ears tend to fit most IEMs. There aren't a lot that are uncomfortable. In this case, these are actually quite comfortable. I didn't really think about it. The faceplate has a subtle Kimang and then some sort of scrolly stuff on it. It fits the packaging and it fits the aesthetic of the IEM. I'm not a huge fan of this sort of flowery scrolly thing, but it's subtle enough that that I, I'm okay with it. The cable is a, it's sort of a purple and blue, I'd call it maybe more of a lavender and light blue braided, I believe copper cable, it might be a silver cable, uh, with a 3.5 termination. It's good, it's a nice cable. It's a little stiff. It had a little bit of microphonics, but it wasn't too bad. And uh, it, it fits the aesthetic of the IEM. It actually looks really nice. What's really interesting to me about the CVJ Kimang Aria is how it graphed versus how it sounded. And I always listen to IEMs for a while before I graph them and look at the graph because I don't want my own opinion to be colored by what I see on a graph. I don't like judging something that I listen to by what it, the graph looks like. But it's definitely going to influence how I feel about something after I've looked at the graph, but I really want my impression, my first impression and my lasting impression to be how it sounds. In the low frequency range, 
the Kimang Aria peaks at 100 hertz, and then it slowly rolls off until 20 hertz. And it does it a very gentle slope. What it reminds me of is a sealed speaker enclosure. If you look at sealed speaker enclosures, they tend to have a very gentle slope down from their, their lowest peak frequency range. And what it sounds like in a speaker when you're listening to a sealed speaker enclosure is it sounds generally very tight and precise and accurate, but with not a lot of thumpy, hard-hitting bass emphasis. Oftentimes, you'll look at studio monitors that are sealed, and this is uh, a way that a speaker engineer and then in turn a studio engineer is going to get an accurate mix. They may have subs that add that bass element, but Unlike a ported speaker or an enclosure that uses passive radiators, uh, you, you get less bass. However, this is the surprising thing to me. When I listened to these IEMs, I didn't notice a lack of bass or frankly sub bass. And I didn't listen, to be fair, I didn't listen to a lot of heavy, heavy sub bass music or movies with this IEM that might have that, you know, 30 hertz, just gut rumble sound. But I did listen to music that has double bass, uh, the, the, a lot of low E bass guitar, that's the lowest note on a bass guitar, kick drums that hit hard. And so a lot of that maybe lower mid bass and mid bass slam which I love is really, really present and certainly not lacking in this IEM. I'm gonna talk about the gold nozzles because these are the ones that I like the best. And the, the mid scoop really hits rock bottom at close to a thousand hertz. So it's, it's scooped a little bit further up that, you know, mid frequency range. It's, it's scooped at the high end of what I would call your mids, and, and then it rises pretty quickly. So it tends to give a lot of separation between the bass and the treble, and it frankly gives a tremendous sound stage to these IEMs. They felt extremely spacious and wide and enveloping, which I don't often get out of IEMs. It's a pleasant surprise when it's done right, and in this case, I would say it is done right. High frequencies sound nice, they're sparkly, they're no, there's no sibilance, uh, nice and airy. It's a good set, it's a good set. I can't tell you what it costs because I couldn't find it online. I'd pay $149 for this set. I think it's a great value at $149. Maybe $199, 99 would be amazing, but for $149, you're getting a lot. You're getting three nozzles, hence three different tunings, you get amazing art, amazing poem, a really nice presentation, and most importantly, a set of IEMs that sound really good, are built exceptionally well, a decent cable, and an overall super fun experience. I love it. This is a Christmas Day IEM. This would be a fun unboxing on Christmas Day. Maybe this is something you should think about giving to your friends and family that aren't super into IEMs, but wanna learn more about them or IEM curious, because I think it's a fun experience. The poem and the picture add a nice touch. And when the packaging is long gone, someone will appreciate these IEMs for, I would hope, years to come. I'm James Deemer, the Audio Nomad. If you know anything about this Kimang Aria, the CVJ Kimang Aria, let me know in the comments below, and I hope you enjoy the video. We'll see you next time. This video is brought to you by Linsoul.com. Linsoul sells IEMs, headphones, amplifiers, digital to analog converters, cables, really just about anything you could want for personal hi-fi or even home hi-fi. Their prices are great. The quality is exceptional and their customer service is really second to none. Check them out in the link below.